the guy sitting beside me. He, are you the Prince of Nigeria or Prince of Ghana? <laughs> prince in Nigeria. Prince in Nigeria. Which part of Nigeria? Odoruo, which is in Oshun State. Wow. So you guys, people who are watching this, you're more than welcome to the kingdom of Odoruo. Uh, if you're ever in Nigeria, just hit me up. You're more than welcome. And who we'll accommodate you? You're more than welcome to come visit. <laughs> <laughs> We will, we will accommodate you. We will accommodate you. You're that, welcome to come visit. Diners love visiting African countries. Mm -hmm. When was the first time that you visited Africa? Uh, Tanzania, uh, December 2011. I went to Tanzania. Loved it. What was the mission going to Tanzania? I just, uh, well, the mission was I was going to go to Brazil. Okay. And get a villa and get a bunch of fine Brazilian women. <laughs> But that, uh, those plans fell through, so a friend of mine encouraged me to go to Tanzania. So I went to Tanzania. I just wanted to experience Africa. I really didn't have any, uh, I didn't have an agenda really. I just wanted to go because my friend said go, and I, I mean, I fell in love. Wow. And since then, I don't even see you in Tanzania anymore, but I've been seeing you around West Africa. I'm West Africa. My heart is in West Africa. I'm a West African cat. And so. how many African countries have you been so far? I think my. 14, 13, 14, something like that, yeah. But something that I don't understand, Dinos can come to Ghana today and live the next day. Dinos can go to Nigeria and live the following day. But Dinos, why don't you move to any of these countries? Okay, well, first of all, I've been in Ghana for four days. Okay. <laughs> I was in Nigeria for almost two weeks. It's in the works, it's in the works. It's in the works, so I'm looking for land now, I'm gonna start building and it's gonna happen. You have your Nigerian passport right now? Uh-huh, Was it I'm Nigerian. It? You're in Nigeria now? Yes. Wow. Acquiring the passport, was it like difficult to get it? No. I mean, basically what immigration asked for, I provided. So. Amazing. That is, I want to know, how has the experience in Africa been like since 2011 till now? How has the experience been like? Uh, I, I'm enjoying, you know, especially when I go back to the places I've been to, mm -hmm. seeing the uh, gradual improvement. So. Uh, I'm in, I'm enjoying that, um, and also too the diaspora. Many people in the diaspora, them being sparked and motivated to travel mm. to Africa, they come experience the motherland. Because at the end of the day, if you're black, you're an African. So why not come to Africa? Wow, if you're black, you're an African. But I, you know for sure that some of our brothers don't want to accept the fact that they're Africans. You have anything to tell them since they've been in and out? Uh, they're, they're lost. You know, it's uh, it's one of those things. It's just, you know, we just we laugh at them. You know, we feel sorry for them, but you know, we gotta we have to move on. You know, if you want to be a indigenous Hebrew Israelite, more Moroccan from Turtle Island uh, in America, mm -hmm. you know, that's that's you. You know, but you know, God bless you. Good luck. That is, there's this question that I know for sure that a lot of Africans on your page want to know. When you come to Africa, uh -huh. you're always at the, maybe the village part of Africa. Right. That's where you keep on going. I, I had to see you in the city. Mm -hmm. I'm in the city, so. Sometimes you're in the city, but most of the time the vlogs that you show basically like outskirt of the city uh -huh. and stuff. Why is that? That's where the culture is. I mean, as the cities developed, I mean, the cities are getting better, the infrastructure is getting better, but the cities are, are, in my honest opinion, and some people might get offended, nothing more than copycat versions of, they're trying to duplicate the West. Okay. And I don't see that being unique or authentic. So when I come, because when I first started coming to, come to Africa, I was coming, you know, I had, I was working in corporate America, so I had limited vacation days. Okay. So why go to a major city? that's, I guess, trying to be like the Western counterparts. When I live in LA, I lived in Atlanta, and they're just, they're, they're, they're trying to copy those formats. So I can only experience the culture in the villages, so that's where I would want to spend my time. And that's, you know, that's where I ended up. And I know sometimes some Africans get offended because- I Oh, well, they're, in, they're insecure, that's all. They're insecure. You know, I, I think a lot of Africans suffer from, um, uh, what do I want to say? They want to be white people. You know, they have this white standard. So since white people told them that what you do in the village 
is backwards. They've adopted this mindset. You know, I don't come to, the last thing on my mind when I come to Africa is white people. So I think that's what it is. You know, they seek white approval. And because of the images and the way that Africa has been documented by white people, you know, they make the village, you know, our indigenous spirituality, they make it seem as it's, it's evil, mm -hmm. it's backwards. And so a lot of us unfortunately have adopted that. And they think, hey, we, basically, they want to compete with white people. I'm not here, I don't come to Africa to compete with white people. You know, I think that's the problem. It's just this mindset we have. Yeah, because um, I read a comment on your channel, someone was saying that diners are feeding into the negativity out there because like some of us, um, we hardly get to see Africa this way. But when diners go to Africa, this is exactly the same Africa that he shows. And I saw in the comment section some of you, I, I read those comments right, right. from Africans, like uh -huh. some of them were so mad, like, hey, at least, like, you know, there are a lot of African Americans out there, a lot of African diaspora yeah. who are actually following you to see Africa through you. Right. So why don't you, like, balance the equation for us you know sometimes maybe you're in the city just because i saw your um video on instagram was like you, you told her ah, i could take flights to kumasi mm -hmm. and then all this while i never knew well i knew i could fly i just know it was that cheap okay yeah yeah i didn't know it was that cheap good yeah. so we, we want to know can you sometimes balance the um the videos for us like because you do videos on youtube if you don't know that is the youtube but the youtube name is search for uhuru you search gotta subscribe you gotta subscribe right now and go support the brother i mean like he has been to so many african countries more than me mm. but anyway i just wanted to know can you balance the equation for us because this is what a lot of africans on the channel have been saying like we are following you just because we want to see Africa through you. We have never been to Africa. But mm -hmm. we always see Search for Uhuru at the village part of Africa. Yeah, you're supporting the people. I, 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 would, I would say this. The people mm -hmm. who are, I guess, offended by the amount of time I spend mm -hmm. in the village, you tell them to go get a camera, okay, buy an airplane ticket, okay. and they could come to Africa and document it how they want. What? Diners uh -huh. love voodoo. Yes. That is, yeah. why do you have so much love for voodoo? The last time I did a voodoo video, I lost thousand people following my channel. Because again, again, we, we, our, our people have been brainwashed into believing. Like, don't say you hate voodoo, but then you're a Christian or a Muslim. You know, a lot of our people have been brainwashed into thinking that the Western standard is the only standard to go by. Before white people showed up to West Africa, mm. we were animists. We practice voodoo, we practice uh, Ifa. We had our own traditional religions that our ancestors crafted specifically for us. The only reason why you are a Christian is because white people forced you to be a Christian. The only reason why you're a Muslim is because Arabs came, invaded, and enforced Islam on you. So I don't, I, I just, I don't understand why. Now, black Americans, the diaspora, we somewhat have an excuse because we've been disconnected from our spirituality. But for an African, born in Africa, to not embrace their indigenous spirituality, spirituality and replace it with something foreign, it makes no sense to me. Like, it just, it makes no sense to me. You'll never hear the Chinese talk down on his indigenous Confucianism, whatever it's called you know, and replace it with uh, Christianity. You never hear the Indian talk bad about their religion and replace for their Christianity. But for some reason, the African denounces his own spirituality and replace of the religion that the colonizer forced on him. It makes no sense. So again, those thousand subscribers, they're lost. <laughs> Like, there's this question I really want to ask you. Mm -hmm. There are people that I normally see on social media claiming mm -hmm. like Pan-African, I'm Pan-African, full Pan-African, but a person like that has never stepped his foot in Africa. Right. What do you say about people like that? Uh, well, Marcus Garvey, he never stepped foot in Africa. Okay. I, I think the if your intentions are to eventually step foot in Africa once you have the resources to, then, then yeah, but I think a lot of, even Pan-Africanists, they're scared to come to Africa. I'm, I, I noticed that, like they don't, they, they want to be Pan-African in America, mm -hmm. but they don't want to come to Africa. Why is that? I, I guess they feed into the negativity. I, I run into a lot of them. 
and you, you know, know they're serious or not no no but they, which means you have to address this issue when if someone is scared he calls himself pan african he's scared of coming to africa if you have a message to tell that person what are you going to tell him stop being scared you know i hear the well <laughs> the, the flight's too long i'm a pan african yeah. I'm a pan African, <laughs> but I can't fly to Africa because the flight is too long. <laughs> no, that should be. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> All right. Literally, just to, so you can step on the soil, mm. di- you can fly direct from uh, JFK, New York, to Dakar, Senegal, mm. and it's like a seven hour flight. Wow. You watch a movie, you take a nap, you land. You know, so there's no excuses. So we hear that now. As far as the uh, the money issues, you know, I you know that that's a real issue for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. But I think uh, a lot of times it's either missed priorities, or a lot of them are just scared. You know. Wow, Dennis. Before I let you go, go ahead. I, I know a lot of the black Americans or maybe Africans in the diaspora feel like when they come to Africa, they will not be accepted. Right. Not being an African American, travel within Africa. Nigerian. I'm Ni- Nigerian. Okay. So that should tell oh, you right I'm, there. I'm so sorry. Like, you being a Nigerian. Well, I'm, I'm a black American Nigerian, Nigerian. I guess. Okay. But for those that say that we're not accepted, <laughs> I'm Nigerian. So that should tell you right there. I was received. I've been received everywhere I went. All the countries you've been to? I've been received. Nobody hates you because you No one hates me. I think what happens, um, there are a lot of Africans who immigrate to America okay who I guess since they don't want to offend the white people they carry themselves a certain way which can I guess um, I would want to say upset a lot of black Americans because the way they carry themselves or their attitudes are they want to be seen as different from those black Americans and I think the way they go about it, uh, a lot of times, it uh, rubs black Americans the wrong way. So with that being said, um, if the immigrants are the first people that you come in contact with from Africa, and if they rub you the wrong way, then it's like, okay, if they're like this here, I just only can imagine if we go to their home how they are. But that's not the case. That's not the case. And I think that has been somewhat the problem. But my, my experience overall has been from immigrants to the continent has been great, wow. you know. But you know, but the people that continue to, I guess, try to leverage this, uh, Africans don't like us. They they have no intentions of coming to Africa anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, don't tell me that Africans don't like you. But then you want to go to Paris, or you want to go to Europe. You know, you, you don't want to go to Africa because you swear Africans don't like you. But then you're in Europe, who colonized. Africa brought you over here, stuck you on plantations, which you're still pretty much on for 400 years. But then you still want to go to their homeland, but you don't want to come to Africa. So a lot of these people aren't serious. They're just using that. We call it Negro stalling tactics. <laughs> All right, they don't. They they're not serious about coming to Africa in the first place. So they'll use every excuse or stalling tactic to not come. But then they have no issue. We're walking around and being around white people every day in America. Like, I, I, some African Americans ask me, Dinah, ask those Nigerians if they were involved in the slave trade, right? Yeah. My response was, do you ask your white boss if he was involved, if his ancestors were involved in the slave trade? But you want me to ask Nigerians if their forefathers sold us, but you won't dare ask your white boss, your white neighbor, the white lady at Target, white people in America, if their ancestors were involved, but you want me to ask the Nigerians. Like I said, they're not serious, just ignore them. Dinos, I feel like Dinos love Africa by heart because even his costume right now, it's everything African. Dinos, I love the fact that you love Africa and I love the fact that you're traveling within Africa. Like your trip was actually an inspiration to me uh-huh. to start my whole Africa to the world trip. Because okay. I, I see African American, like I told you I had classmates from Af- uh, African American who were my classmates, mm-hmm. but all of them were scared to come to Africa and right. I saw you traveling, eating, but the other side of Africa, I was like, Dennis is doing the other side of Africa, but since it's not showing the other side, I'll come and show you the mm-hmm. other side. So you know what, you can follow Dennis, go check out his videos, go subscribe, go support the movement. Dennis, it's been long, you need to hit 100K. I know, right? So, guys, go to search for Huru. Thank you. Search for Huru. 
Uh, also, next tour is coming up in March to Nigeria. Please visit Nigeria with me. Nigeria is an absolutely beautiful place. Uh, we're going to go to my kingdom of Oruo. We're going to go to Oshun State. We'll be in Lego. So please come and join us uh, in Nigeria in March. The dates are March 20th through the 26th. Uh, hit me up. Uh, just go to DynastyMirror.com. DynastyMirror.com. Send me a message. Until next time, Wody. Nice meeting you. Nice meeting you finally. <laughs> I am Maya. <laughs>